Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've got this idea from other YouTubers and I thought why not? And that is to do an inventory showcase. And I know it's one of those meme moments where literally no one asked for it and I'm like I'm gonna spill my inventory for you guys. So honestly, I'm sure some of you are curious about how a 4 year account looks like and uh, some of you are getting ready to judge me big time so yeah, go ahead. Honestly, I don't think I'm the most efficient player and I have some serious hoarding issues. <laughs> so I, in fact, if you think there are better ways to play the game, feel free to share it with me and all the other players in the comments below. But before we look at the hero inventory, I need to show you guys something that is very overlooked and that is your icons. So icons basically gives you a lot of accumulative passive buffs such as you know attack or magic attack, physical attack, even crit damage and HP even. So all these are actually things that you will accumulate over time and there's not anything to rush for. However, there is something you can actually control and that is the transcendence of heroes. So as you know, Hero Sanctum is already live so there's a lot of heroes you can actually work on and to actually get all these buffs as you can see 1000 transcendence will give you 5% crit damage increase across every mode and that is actually very significant as you accumulate all as with the as you accumulate the rest as well so basically what you want to do is to transcend all your three stars and four stars not just for the sake of the icon but also to uh, you know, boost your hero sanctum as you go along. And I know it's not something again to be rushed, so this is this is just something you can take note and keep in mind as you play the game. So of course, as you can see here, all these are achieved over time, and of course, you can actually you know do your gacha to get all these quests. And all these are very old: Tartarus, Celestial Tower. Okay, so nothing you can... If you don't have these, it's totally fine because these buffs are only for mode specific um, buffs basically, yeah. <laughs> so for Grove Dungeon as well, you can also gain a lot of uh, buffs here but not too important because ultimately Grove Dungeon is something you will clear once and you can auto clear from there on unless, you know, they increase the difficulty of Grove Dungeon then that's something to be looked out for. And all these arena buffs as well, they are pretty good and they are stackable which means 60 plus 80 which means 140 physical attack. And it may sound very little because it sounds like the buffs that Hero Sanctum gives you but think of it as a whole figure where everything comes together. So these are just something that you, you can work on eventually, okay? Okay, so moving on to my hero inventory now. So I'll be talking about each hero that I have. What are the main ones I have in my inventory right now and you know, some random ones later on we'll see in the storage. So over here, okay, I have three farming teams. Okay, this is just a team whereby I, I use for my videos because sometimes after you complete the special dungeon, you cannot, I can't go back to it. So I just made, you know, this is a temporary thing. So for here, for team A, I use Yonhee for many many stages 3 5 4 5 5 5 um, 13 5 and even 8 20 and then over here you have I have Cleo Cleo is used for 6 10 basically that's it and I use Kill so if you need more help for farming with Cleo please check out the video I've linked above and then we have Cult so Cult I'm currently using her in Arena my basic build is just crit and lethal and double HP as well as uh, ignore defense accessory um, all these. Uh, you can actually go to my account if you want to look at the build so I won't touch on uh, the build in detail but basically Cult is really used right now it, it's almost barely used I would say Okay, but I'm still using her because I really really like her effect and that is the destroy armor and it's a chance base by the way so yeah basically I like Cult and I'm using her the only thing I don't really appreciate is her costume because they did not revamp her costume um, fingers so yeah so her fingers look like crap when you use her costume so I'm, that's why I'm not using any costume and these are the costumes that I bought for her actually I have the this one I love this one and also the 
Load star. I think these are her best. But to be honest, even the Slim Suit one looks pretty good. Um, the Guild one looks pretty good and the Snow one. However, I do find that she looks super thin in the Snow one, that's why I didn't buy it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Weird reasoning. So moving on from Cork, we have Zahara. Zahara is a very very good hero with a very good passive. Okay, He can bring down Chris very well and he also has a block rate reduction which lets him be which is also making him usable in PvE if you have a spare slot on your team and basically if he's not used in arena he is also very strong in arena but if you're not using him in arena you can use him in PvE and basically that's it that's why he's on my uh, in, in my inventory currently and then we have Rin I don't really use Rin but you know things can change and sometimes I do bring her in if I feel like it and uh, for her costumes I am a Rin costume collector so I have every single costume from her I think it's a must <laughs> I think it's a must okay and yeah she buffs magic attacks so sometimes you may need her Cesar is also in my inventory mainly because he pairs well with Zahara but beyond that he doesn't see much use nowadays because of Suta and as you can see I have totally removed everything from him the only thing I feel that I think Cesar needs a remake actually because his effect attack has no additional effect and I think he's o the only one he's the only mythical awakened hero that does not have this maybe Truth as well so the older Mythical Awakened heroes do not have an additional effect and I think uh, this makes them very lacking in competitiveness in Arena. And yeah, basically that's just Cesar. I may even throw him to the storage soon because that's just one space. So Tara is next and Tara is a very very good hero in Arena right now. I'm using the double speed build on her. Basically, she has a unique ability for the suffocation. And besides this, she is not really used much in PvE at all. Not sure if she could be used for future content because, I mean, if they really want to create more content for heroes, they can really capitalize on the hero's passives. I think those will be really something to go towards, right? But right now, she's only used in Arena. And then Noah is also used because I pair her up with Tara in my arena team. But beyond that as well, she does not really see much use outside of PvP. But I think that's totally fine. She also has a berserkering effect on her passive, by the way. So I have two Velikas and this is something that is gonna be very interesting to talk about. So my first Velika is actually used for item and jewel rate. Okay. As you can see here, these are her traits. So traits are very important for Velika, for DPSs in, in, in all cases, okay? So Lethal Rate, Electrify Resist and Increase to Offensive. I think I'm using her for the Fire Dungeon as well, as well. So this is the Velika I'm using for Item Rate, Jewel Rate and the Fire Dungeon and maybe for Special Dungeons as well. Now I do have a specific Velika for Accessory Rate because Accessory Rate does require you to have Paralyze Resist and Stun Resist. Of course you can go into Accessory Rate without these traits as well. Um, it could be slightly more challenging, okay? But I decided that I'm gonna make this Velika only for Accessory Rate. Now in future, if they decide to, you know, give Item Rate Level 8 and Jewel Rate Level 8 unique effects, more statuses, then um, I may just have to make do with it and change this around because I can't afford to have another two more Velikas specifically for each raid, right? So if you do have the resources, go ahead. No no problem at all. I've, in fact, I think that's the best way. However, you still need to swap your uh, weapons around. So that is something that I don't really like. That's why I have two Velikas built and it took me a while. Okay, this Velika was properly confirmed um, maybe a few weeks ago only because I decided that I should also make two myth fully polished weapons for her as well. Yeah, so 
that's why I have two and she actually does have some costumes okay. I oh yeah she is equipped with this costume this is the Japanese one so I don't really have a lot of Velika costumes because I personally do not like the designs too much these are really outdated unfortunately I do like the sea one, the summer one, and uh, I, di I do have the Halloween one as well. But this is beyond that, I don't think her older designs. Now, Velika is a very old hero, so her designs in the past, I mean, a bit lackluster to me. Yeah, okay. She's saying a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, yeah, just to say, I don't really have Tara and. I don't really have Tara and Noah's costumes as well because I think they are really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so moving on to Chris. Chris is a hero who comes in and out of the meta a lot. So a while ago I was still using him and then now I took him out for Fai. And then I believe that a lot of Chris is seen in the lower tier arenas, right? So. So he's definitely a hero that I will want to keep in my inventory because I can easily swap him into teams if I do need to. And for his costumes, I did not. Bu I did buy this. This is a myth costume, but you know because of the stat, um, how do you say evening? Evening of the stats across all costumes. So I didn't really equip this. <laughs> But beyond that, I think I, yeah, I don't have a lot of Chris costumes as well because I do, I didn't find his older costumes really nice. I, I mean, that's just a subjective thing, right? I, I don't, actually, I do like this, but I don't know why I didn't buy it. Yeah, so I do like this one. Yeah, so basically, these are just my Chris costumes. It's kind of a sad thing that the costumes, you know, just give a very identical kind of boost. They are not varying in any way, so there's a lack, there's a slight lack of character customization there. I mean, since costumes are so available right now, so easily available right now, I think it's actually possible, you know, they can just do something with the costume system. Now for Miss, she only has one costume. I bought it because for the stat boost, but it's not a lot, and I did I don't like how it looks. Okay, <laughs> so again, she's on my PVP team right now. Double lethal is what I've given her, and double HP. There are better builds, I believe. I'm not sure why I don't have a crit on her, but my crit rate is actually already forty percent. So I guess that's why. And. Uh, yeah, basically Miss is just super strong. She's kind of like the replacement for Zahara actually. And because of the decreased block rate. However, she does have higher utility because of the lethal rate increase as well as the crit rate increase for allies. So again, if you are looking for a if you do have a spare slot on your team, Miss can very well fill up that role as well compared to Zahara well Zahara only is there for his passive Miss actually has active skills you can use if your DPS you know you want them to get the boost immediately and just fire off very heavy damage that's a strategy you can think about so from there on I think the rest of the heroes are not very much used except a few here we'll start off with Freya and she is one of the most amazing heroes in my opinion however she is so so underused because her skill set is just so bad right now okay she was launched during the reboot and they really just kept her at that state not even thinking of remaking her when she deserved it more than a lot of other heroes such as Rin and Ace I believe um, so that is something I just really really hope Netmarble, Death Kagura looked into this boost the uh, Celestial Guardians. I mean, you remade Scoot and Noah so quickly but you forgot about Truth and Freya. I think these two deserve it a lot more and Truth and Freya are super popular heroes as well. So yeah, I really hope she gets a remake. And I do have the Guild Guardian costume. I did not buy this one because I really think it looks 
bad. <laughs> I'm sorry again. I just think there's too much going on and she's very mature and wearing this is just weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is so much classier. <laughs> okay, moving on. We have Scoot. So Scoot is being used in my accessory raid level 8 team. That's why she's in my inventory. Uh, this is primarily because of this passive effect, which increases lethal rate of magic allies by 30%. She also decreases counter rate of enemies, which means she will reduce the demon of Pascal's counter rate and you may take lesser damage. Okay, it's just a possibility, but nevertheless, it's still something. So I do swap. I don't know why she has this build actually, because I think I was previously using her in arena for testing and it didn't really work out so she is back in my accessory rate level 18 now. Evan. Evan is fully stripped, however he is being used in my siege defense team so that's why he is still around and yes I actually didn't give him armor for my siege defense I just realized but he survives really really well I mean he does have the willful ring after all and he has a huge ton of bulk so that is something you will want to, you know, if you do, have not been using him in Siege Defense, you can use him. And again, I think Evan, he's the main character. He has come a long, long way from this chibi look all the way to what we have now. I mean, look at the height growth. Um, so, a lot of the older costumes I did not get because I think it was so unfitting and then he started growing up when he awakens so that's when I started to look into the costumes and finally the myth awaken costume these two were event costumes I believe you get them from the uh, some reward exchange when he was released I'm not sure if they're on sale now okay Eileen I think it's no question why Eileen is here Eileen is an insane buffer Okay, physical attack buffer and crit rate buffer for Shane. So she is definitely a must have on your in your inventory. If you don't have her, something is wrong. Costumes wise, I have a lot of costumes. But there are still also a lot that I don't have. And I particularly didn't get the swimsuit ones. Um, I think it's just really flat. Okay, sorry. But I really think it's super flat. And I... I think all these are pretty good but I didn't get them because I think back then you know you can only choose one I mean um how should I say this you could only get the best costumes back then right before they revamp the system so that's why I only got all these and some of these which I don't really fancy were actually part of a set costume set which I also got so that's why they are here these two were free costumes and then we have this one which is really nice this is the Japanese series I believe super super nice and of course the spring costume gorgeous this is also very nice so I think Eileen is one of those heroes that has a lot of cosmetics and they are mostly really really good then we have Shane okay I have three Shanes so let me explain why I have three Shanes the first chain is used for Celeste. Uh, sorry, Heavenly Stairs. Yeah, the, f the this chain is used for Heavenly Stairs. So I have double lethal on her and double HP, and also this one, this Celestial accessory. Um, and the second chain was previously used for my raid, and it's still on my guild raid team. Okay, as you can see from the icon. So this was a chain that I previously used for raid and then there's a more competitive chain which I use for heavenly stairs. So why do I have a third chain? So I'm not sure if you guys have been following the meta but I think many months ago there was a period where Shane was used in arena. This was um, after the reboot I believe. So yeah, that's why I have a third chain because she was there for arena. Yeah, she was actually used in arena. So that's why this Shane is here and I didn't really give her costumes as you can see because I kind of is I'm kind of treating her like a spare now and I'm really relying just on these two Shanes to get by every 
uh, my daily modes and you know whatnot. So heavenly stairs Shin is my most important one now. Yes, I do use Shin for heavenly stairs because I'm not using Melia. I don't want to use Melia. I'm just really trying to get the resources and you know get out of the mode. Suter. He is not plus 10 by the way, so I'm not using him in arena. I know he is meta right now because everything about him is amazing. This costume is particularly amazing. Okay. And yeah, basically he's here because he's very recent and I have no plans to use him yet. I could mythical power him up, but I think I will just save those resources for the next hero. Don't follow me, I, if you have Suter, please use him because I think he's really good. I just prefer not to use him because during that time I was saving up my rubies for Fi, who we'll talk about later. So yeah, that's what happened. And then for Galidus, he's level 44. Uh, I don't use him in arena anymore because of Fi. He is still being used in arena, he is by no means a super bad character, I mean 7 Nights of Old can't be that bad, but he does get checked by 5. So that's why I don't really use him and I, you know, to me the freeze can easily be bypassed so I don't want to use him. But he's really just for arena. I actually do use him in heavenly stairs sometimes. The reason why is because he does provide a 12 turn immunity to death. So when heavenly stairs on weeks that the enemies actually can cast 100% death, I use Galidus in the front line for, you know, so that I don't have to give all my heroes death immune death resistance. And that saves me about, I don't know, 80 topaz. Yeah, that saves me about quite a amount of quite a good amount of topaz. So that's why I use Galidus sometimes. Of course, then we have Melia. She's in arena team. I don't use her in heavenly stairs. I've stressed that a lot. And she is just very amazing, super OP. If you have her, I'm sure you won't leave her in the storage. Moving on, we have live streamer school. I have made my live streamer scope plus 6 and it really bugs me so I will look at making her plus 10 in time to come but currently she's plus 6 and I think she's super useful in heavenly stairs I use her in heavenly stairs and I also use her in raid accessory raid and basically that's the only two places that I'm currently using her and of course she's also good as uh, support in special dungeon I'm using her in the Fi dungeon she's very good for Velika teams basically because of her passive these two lines these three lines in fact so yes if you don't have her I think it's totally fine she is not something that you know if you don't have her you can't play the game but she makes things a lot easier and then we have five I think I'll just leave you guys to watch the videos for five I won't talk about her right here okay <laughs> and I have another Velika actually so wait how many Velikas do I have Three Velikas in fact. But this is only level 40. Um, the only reason why she exists is because I was making the beginner's guide and I was trying to have a demo on on heroes, on you know mythical awakening in general, and I had to use a Velika for a demonstration because Velika is the best newbie hero a newbie should have. <laughs> okay, so that's why she exists. And then we have Yonhi, she is the best farmer in the game, of course. If you don't have her, get her. So speed attack. Speed attack is a must because you want to outspeed the enemies, you want her to have the highest speed to outspeed, yeah, oh, sorry. You want her to have you want her to outspeed even your other heroes, your transcendent heroes on the team when you're trying to level that up, right? So these are just some of her basic quips. Again, I have made many farming videos. Go check them out if you need more help in farming. Again, for costumes, something I forgot to talk about. I actually wanted to collect most of Leon his costumes, but I really don't like this. I think this is super plain. And again, I just have something against very plain swimsuit costumes. Okay, so I love all these. These are really 
well done. I mean, compared to swimsuit costumes, honestly, this is just amazing. This was a free one from her Gaia's gift, I believe. And yeah, we have these two prime, more, you know, premium costumes. And I didn't buy the Alice in Wonderland as well because I think back then we were all saying that her animation was too long. So it actually caused longer farming duration. That's why I didn't buy it. I mean, it's available for sale, no doubt still available so I can always get it you can always get it anytime if you like but I didn't get in fact I did have a few yon he's back then uh, but now I, I kind of have one I think I thrown one into he hero sanctum Atalanta so why is Atalanta here she's actually a hero that gives your whole team 20% lethal rate so if you didn't know that and you need a lethal rate buff uh, for your team, you can use Atalanta. You don't even have to use her skills to get that effect because it's on a passive. So Atalanta is kind of like a hero where you can... I, I used to just throw in if there's an extra space, but recently with um, Scoot, normal Scoot, okay, for Velika, I don't really need that. And then for Shane, you kind of give her lethal weapons already, so she has very high lethal too so you don't have to use Atalanta. I do have two Aragons. Okay, the reason why I have two Aragons is because Guild Raid sometimes requires you to have a counter built Aragon and Heavenly Stairs sometimes requires you to have a HP Aragon because if you have Aries on the field then you don't really need a counter Aragon as well. So that's why I have two Aragons for these two purposes. And in fact, Siege Defense, I also use Aragon because Aragon decreases crit rate of enemies by 30%. So that can heavily bring down the damage dealt by them. And again, it's just a more defensive uh, kind of Aragon build. This one, I'm definitely going with HP. And in fact, you can even use a counter Aragon in Siege Defense because in Siege Defense, you want to delay time. So countering actually helps a lot. And uh, yeah, basically the the way I use my Aragorn really depends on the situation. So if I use him for guild raid, then I definitely have to give him the appropriate build, which is why he doesn't have anything now. I have one Ares. I know some players have more than one Ares because Ares was used before the reboot in so so many situations. Right? He, she was used as the PvE tanker, taunter. Yeah, basically that was her role. And she also provided buffs for PvE teams in the past. But now she is only kind of used, I only use her in Castle Rush and also Heavenly Stairs. No, I don't even use her in Castle Rush anymore. So I use her only in Heavenly Stairs despite her being a Castle Rush specialist. She does help your whole, she does buff your whole team for Castle Rush, which is very good. So if you feel that, you know, you have some difficulty in uh, taking a lot of damage, you want to, you may want to use her if you need. I have videos on that, so you can check it out as well. And, but I find that her utility really comes in in Heavenly Stairs because of her taunt. So again, for Aries, you need, need to have very high counter for her in order for her to be very effective in the cooldown reduction for Shane, okay, for Shane teams. Vanessa um no <laughs> Vanessa you are going into storage oh I can't even select her okay so she must be somewhere I think she's in yeah okay so I use her in search defense don't ask me why <laughs> I just throw her there I just threw her there I think it's because you know of her reset her awakening skill reset that helps to delay time and whatnot so that's why I threw her there but you don't have to use her at all okay you don't have to use her at all she belongs to the storage she belongs to the storage I mean she does have users in accessory level 8 because she can help to reset your Valagas awakening skill and if you do have a lot of difficulty in in uh, clearing accessory rate level 8 you can use Vanessa instead of Seek 
okay you can also use seek both of them are the ones that reset Valica's awakened skill for you so you can have a much easier time dealing with that if you don't have all the necessary buffers basically that's her role B dumb um, B dumb is used in guild dungeon okay because he provides immunity to formation change and he also has a lower speed than Da Qiao. So that's why he is up. He is used. If you compare his speed to Shane, Shane has a 32 speed as well. So when you use Shane and Bidam, at least you get a 50 50 chance to see who goes first. And if your Shane still goes first, then that's very good. If your Bidam goes first, then that's not very good. But if you use Da Qiao, who also has the immunity to formation passive, then there's 100% chance your Shane is not going to go first, which means your Shane will not get her awakening skill earlier than you want. So that's why Bidam is used, Bidam is preferred over there. And um, basically that's all he's used for. Yeah, that's why I only have HP armor on him. And I mean when the time comes and you need willful rings on him, do, please do give him the willful rings. And you don't really need to invest in costumes for him unless you really like them. I think this is just detailed. That's why I got it. I kind of did not talk about costumes for the other heroes, but nothing much as well, to be honest. Chloe. So Chloe is a raid specialist. I am not using a level 50 Chloe, unfortunately. I'm actually using a level 40 Chloe, which I think is somewhere... Yeah. So this is my level 40 Chloe and the reason why I'm using a level 40 Chloe is because I want her to die fast. Yes, I want her to land her debuff which is this skill. Okay, increase damage taken by the boss and decrease their defense for by 80% for 12 turns. Once she's done, once she lands that, she is ready to die. So that's why I need her to go and I'm using a level 40 Chloe. I didn't even make her plus 10. Okay. And the only thing you need to give this Chloe are resistances so that you she can use her skill. If not, if not she if she gets incapacitated, you know, uh, by the debuff, then then your run is just gone. And also status resist and cooldown increase. So what you want, how you want to gear this Chloe is basically just give her give her all the immunities and resistances you can get for her. And yeah, moving back up, we have Fong Yan. Um, Fong Yan is a Grove Dungeon Specialist. I don't use him anymore. However, he is in the inventory because I was testing him for World 14 farming. Unfortunately, he takes very, very long. So I will be putting him back into the special dungeon. I mean storage. <laughs> Okay, Soy. Soy is used in Guild Dungeon. She is, after all, a Guild Dungeon Specialist. She also buffs Lethal Rate for allies, so she really helps your Shane or your Valica if the need arises. However, she also has a remove buff. So sometimes in Guild Dungeon, you get enemies that buffs them, buff themselves, whether it's a defense or block rate or whatsoever, and this makes it really hard to do a lot of damage to them and in guild dungeon you want to do as much damage to them in the three minutes as possible so that's why soy is very useful soy can help to remove all these things so that your shane will have consistent damage across over the three minutes she also does buff little damage uh, for shane if you need it and then lena so i have two leaners in fact no i have three leaners I have another Lina that is level 40. This Lina I use in item rate and jewel rate because again, I don't really need her to be around. Item rate and jewel rate, you can finish it really, really quickly. So it doesn't even hit 12 turns. So once she casts her 12 turn buff, she's ready to go as well. But the reason why I have two other Linas here is because this one I use in Siege Defense. Okay, Lina was used in Siege Defense even before the reboot, okay, way back, so she exists for this purpose. And the other Lina is the one that I constantly kind of rotate, whether uh, rotate I mean across the mode. So I have her for Guild Raid, if I need her for Castle Rush or whatsoever, I do use her. 
guild dungeon as well so le this other Lina is just more flexible in terms of the traits and the, the what do you call that equipment basically the other Lina I'm just parking her in siege defense because I don't want to change traits or you know resistant rings for her too often of course this is up to totally up to you and then I have Helenia. Helenia is also used in siege defense she is basically the counter hero in siege defense because she helps to reduce cooldown but if you have Aragorn there then it's totally fine as well she does give your team a lot of bulk so that is why she's a very good hero for siege defense but she is she a necessary hero I don't think so at this point because siege defense is pretty doable especially since they cut the time Yuri, I made a late I made a recent video on her again. She is back for farming purposes for World 14.5. Yeah, I think. So yeah, that's what she is here for. Basically used again for testing and she works really well. So you can check out that video. Basically not much use for her. Nia as well, I use her for testing in World 14 as well. Um, not very good because her animations take super long. She is the safest farmer till date still, but she is just taking way too long, so she's not the most efficient farmer to be used. I have two six. Same reason for same reason, okay, for as Aragorn, basically one six is more HP based, one six is more counter based. I don't remember where I use the count the HP based six anymore because I don't think right now we need a HP base 6 so I think this was a situation where I have had since before the reboot and yeah that's why I have 2 6 but this is my main 6 the one that counters more and I kind of rotate between him and Aeris depending on the boss and also depending on my DPS and the mode so these are just some of the counter counter base stuff that I have on Seek that I don't really want to touch because once I just throw on the H the counter armor on him then he's gonna hit 90 plus percent counter with not without much issue um I don't know why Ruri is I don't know why Ruri is here <laughs> I believe I saw her being used in Heavenly Stairs so I I was just thinking what's with the what's with her use yeah i don't know why so i just wanted to check out her skills i'm gonna put her back uh then espada espada is, is used in heavenly stash is the basically the support the best support the specialist for heavenly stairs okay because of this skill it's kind of like a rachel phoenix but re without the other effect but you can only deal this debuff on the enemies in Heavenly Stairs anyway so this is all you need from Espada and Shane can just keep firing off her attacks the other two skills you don't need it at all Hayong, I have 3 or 2 or 3 Hayongs I guess okay this Hayong is totally not used as you can see no jewels whatsoever not even, not even a trace of uh, anything but looking at this set of traits right I'm pretty sure she was used in some guild dungeon mode before the reboot I think in world 10 world 10 guild dungeon yeah if you guys know you guys know <laughs> but but after that she is not used anymore and currently I'm only using this Hayong this Hayong is used in my castle rush because of uh, the decrease in physical attack and magic attack which really protects your team and I think I also use her in siege defense because after all Hayong is a more defensive based healer while Lina is more offensive based healer so that's something that you will want you want to keep in mind when you uh, when, when you want to use these heroes and then we have Rook I use Rook in item raid and siege defense so rook is a very useful hero in my opinion he is useful because he also can cast shields okay 5000 hp shields he cleanses 
and with his exclusive item he allows allies to become immune to sorry he allows allies to become immune to cooldown increases so this is not even a turn based immunity it's a permanent immunity as long as rook is on the field so that's why he's super useful for item rate then we have Tio so Tio is kind of like a hero that I just wanted to try in PvP. I did not get around to trying him um, and he's just around and he's the most popular hero so why not. Uh, we need to look at his costumes. So for Tio, I didn't really get these. <laughs> but the rest, the rest are really really nice. The rest are really really nice and I think Tio is also one of those heroes that get a huge amount of costumes because of his popularity. Yep. Most of them are also very even his chibi. Super cute. Moving on we have Sylvia. Now Sylvia is a very important support hero for Velika. Okay, I use her in my special dungeon, as you can see guild dungeon. Oh, she's also a guild dungeon specialist by the way. Yeah, so she's basically the Rachel for guild dungeon. So you need a Sylvia as much as you, you know, as much as she looks super meh. <laughs> okay, you do need Sylvia. And I also use her in item raid. Or just basically raids that support to support Velika. Okay, wherever Velika is used, you can use Silver unless you have a live streamer scoop that can also double up as a magic attack increase hero. But beyond that, guild dungeon you must have Silver. For Lee, again, I'm if you watch the five video, five dungeon video, you know why I'm using him, and that's because of his two turn buff duration due reduction. He's the only hero in the whole game right now that has a two turn buff duration reduction okay so that's why i'm using him and of course couple with the galidus might he can reduce a ton of buffs then we have ariel ariel is a castle rush specialist she has been remade twice for castle rush so that's why you should be using her okay otherwise she isn't you know they will try to remake her again <laughs> so basically she is there to taunt and remove shields taunt allow Shane to target the right target basically and she also has this buff that increases your block rate and decreases enemy block rate in order for you to do more damage to the castle rush bosses so she's very useful do use her i do have jave here no idea why as well he's gonna be back in the storage i don't even know what this icon is basically you know rachel so i have um, two Rachels, I believe. Not sure why I have this Rachel. I think it's also for Guild Dungeon way back before the reboot. Okay, so we'll not talk about this one. But mainly for this one, I use her in many situations. You need her for Special Dungeon and Guild Raid. Yeah, basically that's all. And that's that's quite significant. Rachel is still... Come on, it's Rachel. You mean PvE Queen. You gotta use her. Even though there's so many replacement and you know duplicates uh, modified to have the Rachel effect, the Phoenix effect, but Rachel is still Rachel. You cannot not use her. You have to have her, right? For costumes, she also has a ton of costumes, and uh, I do have a few. I don't have all, but I do have a few. Again, she's because she's one of the oldest heroes. Now this costume is just bad, <laughs> but okay, because she's one of the oldest heroes, she has so, so many costumes, and the early ones are just pretty basic. So that's why I've uh, came around to get all these. I don't know why I don't have this. Flower Samurai. I actually like it. Yep, I'm gonna buy it. Got it. So, yeah. But this is still my favorite costume. This one. She looks perfect. Super nice. Okay, you need to stop. 
Next, we have Rudy. I'm using him in Siege Defense. He sometimes makes an appearance in PvP, but I don't really run tank, uh, tank builds, so I don't really use him. But you can try him out in PvP as well. I prefer him in Siege Defense because he does have a shield, uh, not shield, but he does have a taunt, and he also, you know, actually this skill is not very fantastic right now when I read it. Yeah. He does have a huge ton of fixed damage though, but it's only to one enemy, so it's not that fantastic. I think he deserves a remake as well. Moving on, we have... I've covered these two, and then we have Bai Jiao. Again, I don't know why... I think it's in my... Some special dungeon, somehow, I don't know why. Um, before, During the reboot, when the reboot just happened, he was one of those heroes that actually had provide uh, your whole team with lethal rate increase as you can see 10% I think it was more but they nerfed him okay and I think that's why they that's why he is here he was actually pretty good for a normal hero during the reboot period but now not so much Ming Ming is here because watch the 5 video and you will know Ming Ming is OP you need to have Ming Ming and if you don't have this costume go get it Victoria I used to use her in item rate because she did give immunity to electrify for six turns so if you give her if you have her on your team then you don't really need to spend the traits to give your Velika in electrify immunity but I feel that you know I could give that Velika Electrified Immunity, take her out and put in Sylvia. So Sylvia actually provides a much better buff for Velika compared to having Victoria which you know you can just permanently have the uh, Electrified Resist on Velika anyway. Cleo, Cleo is my farmer as you saw she has no voice because they didn't want to put in voices for her. <laughs> so yeah. No voice for Cleo, unfortunately, but she is the best farmer for 610. If you don't know why, go check out the video. Every run is about 36 to 38 seconds. I think that is super good and very consistent. I have tons. Of, okay, so after, beyond this point, okay, it's all my fodder. And I'm just gonna give you a very brief view. I have tons of fodder. I'm not gonna talk about all. I don't know 400 fodder okay I'm just gonna just show you guys how I manage my inventory and I think that's more important especially for players who have a lot of heroes um, basically for these rudies I can conveniently sack them for hero sanctum however there's just this one copy that I will keep and why is that so because he has a 4 turn immunity to stun this is used in my jewel raid so he's actually on my jewel raid team now if you see Jewel, um, Rudy once awakened, he loses that immunity, so he basically it changes everything. So I keep this copy for the stun immunity and I think it's still pretty useful for now until they, you know, revamp Jewel Raid. But for now, since Jewel Raid is just so fast, you can actually have the Rudy on your team and for the immunity and basically you can just cheese through it. And then all these are extra heroes that I just put together because of Hero Sanctum. However, I have not gone around to building them. They were already in my inventory as separate copies uh, before Hero Sanctum was even there. So I just put them all together. And hopefully one day they'll be fed away. All these are really just extras. Um, just to... Sometimes I build all these heroes up. Um, for the reason reason being because sometimes you need gold so you need you want to have some spare six star special heroes on hand but as you can see I really don't need gold so in very desperate situations I use them as fodder <laughs> for mythical power up okay in very desperate situations especially when you have too many okay so that's that's just one of the things I do uh, you and I don't recommend any of you to do that okay because they are still special heroes they can get you gold they can fetch you good stuff so don't feed them away as fodder uh, these you can 
immediately sell them off okay you can you should immediately sell them off the blue frame ones I really just yeah I still I have them but you should be selling them off um, I'm building Cal. I'm trying to work on him for Hero Sanctum and then what other things am I working on for Hero Sanctum? I am working on Yuri, so that's why I locked her. So remember, if you want to work on Hero Sanctum, you need to lock the hero. Again, another Rudy here, which I probably... I could transcend him, but I don't know why I would need to do that. Because I'm not going to use him for Hero Sanctum anytime soon. I will just keep him there. And... Who knows in future. So I'm building on my El Ellen and Raccoon and Ellen. So these are again for the important hero sanctums. So if you need to know what are the important hero sanctums, please check the video I linked above. Lots of Banes. The Catty is just something that came by so I just built her. I may, uh, if I get more of course I'll just feed, feed them to her. But otherwise, I won't purposely, you know, rank up catties for this purpose. Uh, Banes, I would. Banes, I, I'm really trying to build because I'm near the next tier of my uh, World Floor Map 4 Hero Sanctum. So that's why I want to keep building my Banes and try to complete that as soon as possible. I'm also building Truths. Okay, Truth is used for the Alluring Charm Hero Sanctum, I believe, and you need six truths of course so i'm trying to get her up other things yeah as i said i'm building cows as well for the same alluring charm hero sanctum teos as well all these aces and rins and karmas they are just duplicates i'm just not gonna touch them uh, and then i have a lot of um, all these five star heroes because i fuse i think i fuse them Please come back. Yeah, so that's how I get them. And I have a lot of one star fodder. So the thing about one star fodder, I, I kind of do this. This is something I call reverse power up. You basically use a higher rank hero to power up a low rank hero. And in this case, you... Okay, I don't have any more two stars. In this case, you are trying to generate more fodder because if you fuse the one star one stars, Right, you basically get a 2 star and you use lesser resources to get 1 fusion compared to using you know if you feed 3 stars to 1 4 star and you feed another set of 3 stars to 1 4 star to fuse the 4 stars to get 1 fusion you use up a lot of heroes you use up 14 heroes it's very good to clear your inventory space in, with the proper method but if you want more rubies Okay, doing the reverse power up is so much better because you get a lot more fodder at lesser cost. And if you use, I mean, if you use less fodder to get fusions, then you basically can get more fusions with the same amount of fodder, right? Compared to using it, using that amount of fodder to rank up the higher, higher rank ones. So yeah, I do have a lot of these, uh, which actually, if I just so happen to have a three star, I think here. So if I go into adventure, then this will happen, auto power will happen, and all my one stars will be fed up. But I'm, I'm not um, particular about it. I mean, farming has to continue. You cannot farm on a full inventory. So auto power up is just something that is uh, there to help you manage all these. And if you do have the time, of course, you can manually do the reverse power up. That will require a lot more hard work, and hard work gives you more rubies. So make your choice. Um, yeah, basically I have a lot of 4 star stuff which I will feed away. Um, currently because I am also doing the Hero Sanctum, so sometimes I end up doing this. Let me see if I have an example. Yeah, basically for Cal, so I would do something like that. I don't use the 5 stars because 5 stars I can do the same for the 5 stars but for the 4 stars I kind of use them to sacri I sacrifice them in this manner so I take less resources I clear some inventory space and I also get the hero built up which I the hero that I want built up 
four more cows. I don't even know if this cow is my extra because I, I haven't been counting but um, yeah basically that is what I do and there's a lot of special heroes so if someone tells you that the rates for seven nights is bad you can show them this video and then see what they say. <laughs> I just, ha I just have to stress again, the rates for 7 Knights of O is bad, but the rates for other heroes is not bad. And if you are a newer player, come on. If you are a newer player and you see this, wouldn't you be excited? <laughs> I would be, because like, which game gives you this amount of special heroes to, to hold onto, right? And of course, again, I'm playing for four, I've played for four years. Some of these copies probably already last for over a year, and they're still here. But I just didn't have the reason to build them, and I still don't really have the reason to build them, especially the hidden masters. So there are some heroes which I will want to focus on at least right now for Hero Sanctum, and I think again that is something that you know you reach a point whereby you can do all this, you can afford to do all these. It doesn't mean you have to do all these at the stage you are at okay so please don't feel stressed and please don't uh, say things like this is a they're trying to make it pay to win so you can get the buff and the buff the buff thing for hero sanctum is honestly honestly so mixed some people say that it's not worth your time so if it's really not worth your time then why are you also complaining about hero sanctum sometimes i don't get it okay Okay, so for my materials, I actually have a Fina. These need to be sold immediately. Don't even need to keep them. Now for Finas, I haven't really have a way, think of thought of a way to use them properly. I could use them for my Banes or Yuris. I think I'll use them for my Yuris um, to get her for Hero Sanctum. But beyond that, I don't really have any priority to use my Finas on. Now if you are a progressing player, of course you will want to use your Phoenix on your Varica if you don't have her at level 50, your Shane, your Sylvia. Um, I basically have a normal hero, top 50 normal heroes you should build. So if you still are not too sure, you may want to check that video out. Okay, uh, but basically Phoenix should be, Phoenix can only be used for normal heroes so they should only be used first for the important ones. I have a lot of rice cakes. Um, which I probably will use as mythical power up fodder because I don't really need rice cakes for regular power up. I have a lot of 6 star crystals. Again, remember I did not mythical power up suitor. Okay, that's how long I've been holding on to all these resources. If I power up suitor, then it's an easy. 50 of these gone. 50 is a huge amount. So I have a lot of crystals. The game is generous with crystals, okay? So you shouldn't have an issue with power up. No one has an issue with power up. Um, elements wise, I think we'll look at it from this view. So as you know, again, I've been looking, I've been doing my sanctum. So my elements have dropped a lot. They previously were at the 50, I had 54 stars or 40 and then I had about 20 to 33, 5 stars. That was how much elements I had. And then after he, Sanctum happened it all went down but I'm still trying to have a balance um, for my elements. You realize that uh, it's quite, it's quite hard to actually keep track right now i need a lot of fire elements because I, I, as i said i'm building truth and building cow so those heroes really need a lot of fire elements that particular sanctum basically and for water i think these are still okay okay i still have a good amount of four stars for all these so not I, i'm not too worried the rest, the 5 stars, I only build them when I need them because you don't get 5 stars easily, you only get them from the rank up and if you are already doing your growth dungeon, you should be getting 2 selectors per day so, 
So currently, I'm going to prioritize on my fire elements, but of course, do what is suitable for your account. Okay, if you need more water ones, just go for it. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you have at least four, uh, six of each rank. Okay, because having six on hand will mean will mean that if there's a new hero out, and you do get 6 copies, <laughs> you can immediately get them to level 50. That's all you need to have on hand. And 6 is so easy, it's just, it's just 3 days of uh, growth dungeon. For pets, I actually didn't really plan to talk about pets, but yeah, I do have 100 pets and a lot of crap. Um, and yeah, I really don't think there's much to talk about pets. You just have them, one copy is enough, the rest just sell them. Okay, so with that we are going on to contents because I realized there are some things that, you know, in con it's actually important to look at in contents. First off, we'll go to the storage. Uh, don't be scared of the storage. Again, this is a 4 year account. So in storage, I threw all my non-use heroes. As you can see, I have another Yonhi here. She's definitely a duplicate. I have two Takas here because Taka was amazing before the reboot and all these heroes are no longer used at all so they are they're all packed here i kind of have every copy of every hero at level 50 and again you don't just throw this in you don't just throw these in for sanctum okay you uh, i mean it totally depends on you but for me i really like a copy i really like to own each of the heroes so I don't throw them into Sanctum just like this. If you do, you may, I mean if you do have, if you don't even care about having a Leo here, if you don't even care of possessing a Leo, you can just throw him in, by all means. I could easily throw in this Blaine, uh, Bane and uh, make my life easier, but I'm keeping it th that way. Yes, and I do have these five. Um, so let me just say why I do have these five. I, I pulled two to three since the Millia day. I got one from Jumping check in and then the other one also from Pulse. Yeah. So basically there are five Galladers and I stored them so that I could trade them in uh, if I do need another million, but as you know, my million is already 44. And I just don't want to transcend Galladus because I'm not using Galladus and I don't know how long he can still last. So is that, if that's the case, I will just hold onto them until some event happens because who knows what they will do. And that is something that I can suggest to you guys. Like if you guys. You know, want to be prepared for future seven night of all events. You can actually hold on to duplicates if you already have them at level forty four. If you already have them at level forty four, okay. And again, here I do have a lot of other six star heroes which I plan to use to mythical power up future heroes. So once they are ready to be gone, I will use, I will just transfer them here. Basically, I just park them here for space. And I have tons more special heroes here. So again, if you want to say that the rates are bad, please look at this. The rates are not bad except for 7 Nights of Old, okay? 7 Nights of Old. They are meant to be rare. Okay, no one is... And it's just... As I said, I'm very jaded by the whole situation. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It is what it is. Netmumble probably won't adjust the rates. So you either... Who? You either go all out and feel super sad. Or you just... Take a step back, hold on to you, whatever you have, and you know, wait for the meta to rotate. Because there are still a lot of regular special heroes that have yet to come. I'm pretty sure they will still be also good with unique skill effects. So if you want, you can just save, save for them. 
For materials, again, I have more 6-star stuff here. The reason why I have all this is because a few months ago, many months ago, there was an event, I think last year actually, there was an event that actually gave you 6-star crystals when you farm an adventure. Yes, super good event, Death Spike. So, that's why all these are here, 96 to be precise. They're all just waiting, enough for actually two heroes, <laughs> but I'm just keeping them here. I could actually transfer more stuff out, and I should. But I'll do that later. So for my items, oh yes, I forgot to talk about items. We're going back to the heroes. Um, yeah, so my item is, my item inventory is very very full, tends to be very very full. Uh, you will want to get rid of all these as soon as you get them, okay, don't even hoard onto them. I still, and I feel that all these event currencies should be parked in a new inventory. They should not be using our item inventory, it's super annoying. Anyway, so I do have all these extra mythical awakened weapons and armor that I could you know just easily throw on if I need to easily continue to polish them I'm pretty lazy when it comes to polishing uh, and that's all my item inventory is actually not a very extensive one if I could I would equip my heroes and sell off everything else because you will want to have the power up stones to polish your items. My accessories however, I did get this berserker ring just 2-3 days ago after the heavenly stairs. So I'm building this currently, it's a hide and remove debuff. This one, this one, super super saddened me. I'm not sure if you can even rank this up if this is at plus 4, does it have to be plus 5? Because I used 3 le 3 substat stones on this 30% chance, okay, did not even go up once. I used 3 debuff removal celestial accessories, did not even go up once. I'm stuck at plus 1 after about 6-7 tries, so I don't know what's the deal, it's insane. <laughs> It's super insane. I don't know what's is there a bug or what, but I hate it. So yeah, I have a lot of willful rings and even more guardian rings. Guardian rings were super hot before the reboot. Okay, so it is. That's why there is. So a lot of times I find myself having full inventory, and the reason why I have that problem is because I have a lot of accessories, special accessories that. I don't know where to use them. So the thing about using these is that yes, they are very good, they should be used. The thing is if you don't have the appropriate base, it's kind of like wasting them to me. Okay, and currently you have the Berserker Ring as the top accessory. So for me, when I think about it, if I don't have the Berserker Ring, I, I try to not use these accessories until I get the Berserker Ring. And Berserker Rings don't come easily, right? So that's why I'm holding on to all these and it's taking up a lot of space. I could use them on my Guardian Rings but again, think, just think long term, think long term and see if you actually want to use them on the Guardian Rings. Who knows, honestly who knows. Guardian Rings may be good again and I mean if that happens then I still do have all these accessories around for me to use so there's no loss. The only problem now is that I'm holding on to too much. As you see, there's a lot. It takes up a lot of space and I actually already used them prior to this video. Can you imagine every day just having a 4, 9 plus item inventory? Yeah, that was how I lived. Also, I'm gonna use up all these vigors. I think Galatus and Isabella accessories come very fast now, which is good, which is good because you need a ton of them to get your your accessory to substat 5 and I, I'm glad they are supporting this um, because when it was introduced last year it was such a huge problem but now it's also taking up a lot of space and beyond that I actually want to touch on the normal accessories because they recently got a buff especially the resistance rings and the activation rings right 
So usually before the bath, I will only keep about three, two to three copies of each. But now with the bath, I may kind of keep a little bit more because who knows when you will actually need it. There's so much debuff going on. There's so many debuffs going on in PvP these days and you don't really know what to expect when the next hero comes out. So you you may not you may even use these one day, I mean who knows? Even though traits are sufficient. So all these are really just there for precautionary purposes. I am thinking of keeping four to five for each of them and no more than that. Okay. Uh, I, I try to sell them, or you can actually go to synthesis. Um, yeah, so basically you can do these synthesis, these, to get Wilfering and Guardian Rings. Hopefully they add the Berserkering one one day. But till then, you can uh, do all these, clear all these monthly, so that you get a very healthy amount of income of Wilfering and Guardian Rings, which you can use um, in all other modes, even beyond PvP. And then, whatever you have left, you can actually sell it, or you can actually hoard it to the next month. And I guess that's something that I'm going to try to do more regularly because I usually just tend to sell my accessories and not synthesize them until one day I realize I don't have enough bases to work on. And for, for some time, I actually tried to get willful rings from Mercure's lab. So yeah, I'm just gonna just run through this so you guys have an idea of how many of each etc. I actually have um, some of my... I've seen some of my guildmates because they, they kind of lend me their accounts, right? Their accessory inbox is super empty. Um, it's, it was so empty to the point whereby I had issues trying to craft, trying to build certain accessories for guild dungeons. So if you're thinking about guild dungeon where there are times when you need various, you know, resistant accessories, resistant accessories are still something you want to have on hand no matter what. But other than that, all these fixed stat accessories pretty much not used anymore. Now they have become even worse than the activation accessories because activation accessories got a major buff. Previously it was just 10% and even if you get it to level 5 it was 14% but now it's 40% to 50% chance to land a debuff. So major major buff. And all these um, fixed accessories, wow I have too many of these. I'm gonna do something about it. These, uh, you, you don't really have to keep too many of them anymore. What you really focus on is the resistance and the activation which could actually be used in future, you know, if you want. And they're so common to come by, so there's really no worry that even if you build something wrongly, you can always change it. They're just too common. Evasion rings. Evasion rings are super important. You will want to have a co few copies of it, especially with willful rings. Substat to willful rings and substat to guardian rings. Maybe not guardian rings, substat to willful rings because for PvE, you will want willful ring and evasion combinations. And uh, yeah, beyond that, nothing much to comment about, but you guys get the idea of how I actually run my inventory. As I said, this may not be the best situation at all because who, no one will really kind of <laughs> get by day to day easily with this. And the reason, I mean, one of the problems about having a very full inventory is that you cannot auto-adventure properly. You will always end up having, you know, doing it 20 times per every 20 times. And that is not a very good quality of life. If you have a very empty inventory, you can actually just spam 100 times of auto adventure clear a lot easier. Finally, for jewels, I have tons of awakened moonlit ores and moonlit ores. Uh, I've been trying my best to build random jewels for awakened fodder, awakened purposes like this. So 7-9 jewels are the best of uh, rubies to suck as fodder. And then Dark Knight jewels are kind of these two only. I don't have anything else to any other special Dark Knight jewel besides the magic attack and physical attack one. 
which is quite sad. For World Boss Jewels, I kind of keep three copies of each, okay? Three copies of each, each color and each substat. So little red, little red, little red. I probably yeah, I don't have any other little red. So as long as I have three extra waiting in my inventory, I am pretty much fine. Currently, green jewels are very bad. So if you ever think of selling jewels, okay, sell the green jewels first. And yeah, basically three of each. Fallout jewels now are not so much use at all except the speed attack and even so you only need kind of one copy. I do have a few copies because coming from before the reboot um, but the rest of the fallout jewels are no just no. <laughs> no one's using them at all. Fallout of old jewels are still very good. Okay, Some of them reflect immunity, cooldown immunity and increase awakening gauge. Status effect resist, well, it's kind of low for an awakened jewel to be honest, so not really used. Skill use chance is still usable. Again, green jewels are also the worst currently, so try to pick red and blue jewels. Revel jewels, I don't have a lot because they're mostly already on my heroes. I'm trying to get more. Sorry. I'm trying to get more status effect resist and skill cooldowns because I think those two are actually the most useful for the long run. They benefit every hero in PvE, support especially. Support, the faster you can use your supporting skills, the more efficient your runs will be. And all these crit damage and physical attack are mainly for your DPS which I mean should be your priority but once you have gotten past that barrier, uh, then your next uh, priority for revolution jewels which should be status effect resist and skill cooldown and I think that's all. Defense, PvE defense is also very good as I said in the beginner's guide revolution jewels are all very good so having them is definitely not a bad thing. No event jewels, pretty sure I set my hooky jewels <laughs> or maybe they are in my storage yeah so storage wise I came from before the reboot, so that is that explains all these. Um, to be honest, okay, I should probably sell them. Sell them for power up stones. However, I just can't bear to, because I never know when I may need more little books, need more speed books for whatever reason. Um, so I'm holding on to these, and these were previously all salvaged. At this point, I will sell them. Okay, I will sell all these plus fives because I don't. I'm not gonna spend 500 power up stones just to get them to plus 10, right? I already have copies like these, which I can just mythical power up. So, all these plus five copies, I probably will just throw them out, and uh, all these, I will think about it. If you do have these copies, it's actually very good because. It costs lesser to upgrade these to plus 10 dragon weapons. You just need about 390 plus 1000 compared to building this, which costs 500,000. So, this has more value than this, okay? So, you want to keep your plus 10 if you do have them still. And then, yeah, I just have a lot of weapons that I'm not using, and all these can easily be, easily be converted to power up stones, but I'm not doing so. For some reason, I'm just gonna keep them until I feel like I'm desperate for stones and I'm not desperate for stones, so yeah. And then for accessories wise, as you can see, I threw a lot of- I have tons of Guardian Rings, I've, I'm not kidding. All from before the reboot. Before the reboot, Guardian Ring was just the top ring, so that's why. <laughs> and yeah, I have a lot of these trash jewels. I'm actually hoping that they bring back the synthesis event that allows you to trade in Galidus Isabella accessories for selectors or something. Yeah, so all these are just here waiting. They are not even used now and in the past they were so important, especially this because of Chris and because of your PvE DPSs but now they are just better accessories than attacking twice. 
on a basic attack. So that is why they are all forsaken here. All these are event accessories. Uh, didn't really use them because I don't really know where to use them and I didn't want a case whereby I use them and then you know the next thing you know they are not being used not being they're not useful anymore so that's why I just I just threw it here okay and with storage covered we are going to chest board because I think you guys are curious who I actually picked for my chest board and my hero is actually Teo. As I said, I'm building a Sanctum, so I need more Teo copies. Uh, may I, I think I need more Teo copies, I'm not even sure, but I decided to just go for Teo. You may not choose Teo, just choose whoever you are lacking for progressing players, and if you're already an endgame player, I think choosing anything really doesn't matter. This is just another fodder provider feature that the game has. Okay. And remember to do it every day so that you can get the max amount of fodder possible. And then for my puzzle, I'm actually on cult. Same reason for my sanctum. Um, I'm, la I'm lacking these two, and I don't particularly, you know, actively go around collecting heroes for puzzle because now a day's puzzle to me is just a feature in the background. Of course, if you are a progressing player and you have chose a hero that you really really want and you want to quickly finish your puzzle to get them I used to have that period, I used to have that phase so I know how it feels uh, I would actively suggest you try to do more fusions Okay, fusions are the best way to get your puzzle completion as well as uh, farming in different different modes so if you need more of the world 1 fodder you can actually try to farm in World one for a little while, okay, not for extended durations. Cause once you get a, once you clear one copy of each, you are basically done. But I just still think fusion is the easiest way to go around it. And yeah, I actually I think I cleared this mainly because I was doing the five gacha and also doing a lot of fusions. Still lacking the Pascal and Kiparang, I believe. Okay. And then we have Hero Sanctum. So it's been a while, it's been a while since the previous video and I'm very happy to show you guys my sanctum. A lot of buffs, even though it's just 1%, I'm very happy, I'm still very happy, there's a lot of satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, so um, what's next for me is this one, building this sanctum and this sanctum. I don't particularly get a lot of world 1 and world 2 fodder, so that is why it's a big problem. Even though the buff is the buff is super important, okay. So again, I'm trying to work on my Ellen and Ellen, as I said, for this sanctum. I'm not gonna care about this and the rest. I don't care at the moment at all. I just want to focus on the those few because there's only so much you can do with your resources, your elements, and all that. So I really, really only want to focus on these three, if possible, for now. For the first. For the special hero, of course, I'm only focusing on this. I've already cleared one. Okay, I've already cleared one alluring charm. So that's why I'm building my truth, I'm building my cow, I'm building my cult, trying to get Teo. So you see that I'm actually getting heroes from various sources. Okay, truth is already available in my inventory. I get cult from the puzzle. I get Teo from uh, sorry, I get Yeah, I get cult from the puzzle, I get Teo from the chessboard. And then I'm getting cow somewhere. If there's a selector, I will choose cow. Okay. And Zahara, he's a blue frame hero, so he comes pretty easily. So I'm not gonna care about him uh, for now. Mercure was actually built ahead of time, so yeah, Mercure is done. So I just need heroes from all these other areas so that is something you can look into so if you already have built up most heroes right most of the important ones you can actually focus on your sanctum because um, you don't really need to go and build up I mean where is truth being used now you don't even, let's say you don't have a truth let's say you don't have a Freya okay if you had a choice if I had a choice I would rather build the truth than the Freya which I lack which I don't have a 50, level 50 copy of for example because Freya is not going to be used now unless she gets a remake so I would rather focus on the Sanctum and finally Fighter Soul I'm, already, I'm 
Grade seven. I'm at number two here. Um, probably need another two weeks to get the number three. So this is something that I am slowly building, and yeah, basically that is a uh, fighter. So only came out for one year plus. Okay, so this is not a four year progress. Lastly, for my Mercure's lab, I'm actually getting the Evil Eye. As I said, you can actually get different different rewards based on what you need. There was a period of time where I was getting the Isabella's Illusion. There was a period of time I was getting the Willful Ring because I really don't have Willful Rings. So, it's all up to you. Depends on what your account needs the most at that point of time. Right now, I'm getting the Evil Eye because I see that there's a resurgence of very heavy damage dealers and I think a lot of evil eyes are coupled to help them with ignoring certain amount of defense. Okay, so that is why I'm getting the evil eye. Um, next one I'm getting, who knows, I really I really can't tell at this point. So I will just wait and see how it goes. I may just get more evil eyes or will more willful rings. Because as I said, Galidus and Isabella accessories are taking up so much space. So willful rings may be better actually. Okay, so that was an insanely long video and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it showed you guys how a 4-year account looks like and if you have any questions about the game or whatever, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to it and once again, stay tuned for more videos, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and see you!